You are listening to DSX Machina. I'm Sholly, I'm a film student, and I like to talk about films and TV shows. So, here we go. Today's topic is a, let's say, difficult topic, because I decided to talk about Fantastic Beasts and where to find them, The Crimes of Grindelwald. And I know, right off the start, like, right there, it's a difficult topic. Because every single person I talk to about this has a very uh, different opinion on this. Because there are the people who really like the film and there are the people who really dislike the film. And to be honest, I, I, I feel both ways. Really. And that has a lot of different reasons and I like to share with you what I think about the film. Why I think it's a terrible film and why I think it's a very decent and even good film. Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. I'm confused. And that is the emotion I had throughout the entire film. Confusion. Because... On one hand, yeah, just yeah, it's amazing. It's it's really highly and very, very goodly produced. It's, it's fun to watch. But on the other hand, what is going on? Like, what is happening? So, let's start where I like the film. I like the film visually <laughs> at first. I know that sounds very, very few, but it's a big and important point here. Because a visually good film with great actors who portray the, the characters so superbly like they do, especially Eddie Redmayne as Newt Scamander, yes, they can save a bad plot. Because to me, watching this movie is still fun. Even though I know that the plot is questionable. Because I like watching it. I like seeing Eddie Redmayne in every scene he plays as Newt's commander. Because it's so interesting. Because he is this character. And I'm just like, yeah Newt, what are you doing next? And the same I do have with most of the characters. I think the actors are so good at portraying their characters. And with the visuals, like the amazing special effects and the amazing CGI, the locations, the costumes, it really works, you know? It really brings this world to life and that is an important part of, of films that are not technically our world. So that, that distracts a lot from the plot. And that is something that makes me very happy because I could watch this film over and over and over again even though the plot is like strange and still enjoy it because it looks pretty. It looks really pretty. That's a good thing. But also I really enjoy some parts of the storyline. For example, Queenie. And I know this is one of the most questionable and splitted topic you can talk about when it comes to Crimes of Grindelwald. And honestly, I do really have a split opinion on that as well. Because I love the idea of this storyline. Queenie Goldstein is, without a doubt, one of the nicest and sweetest characters in the entire franchise. Not just Fantastic Beasts, but also Harry Potter and also all the little things we don't talk about. The cursed child. And to me, Queenie Goldstein is such a lovely character. She's so sweet and she's polite and she's lovely and warm and such a cute and nice personality that the one you would at least expect to join Grindelwald 
is Queenie Goldstein. And that is why I love the idea so much because yes, that's that's how it should work. Because the great thing about unexpected turns of events are not expecting them. You know, it's it's as simple as that. And Queenie is the perfect character for that. And to me, I think Queenie had the perfect motivation for doing so. To her, falling in love is something that is so important to her. Like having this lovely family, having her own cute little life, have children, have her husband and just and just live a happy life. And that is so, so important to her character that she's like a family person. I mean, she still lives with her sister and she likes her sister and wants her sister near her. And she had the motivation. Like, she wants to marry a muggle. Uh, in, in no match, I'm sorry. But she wants to marry someone who can't do magic. That is a great motivation. Love is always a great motivation for doing stuff that is questionable and you wouldn't have expected of a character. Now, my problem, my really big issue with that is, it is so poorly written. We have no clue that this will be happening. We don't get any. We get the storyline, we, we know she needs Jacob and she's devastated that he has to be obliviated and she brings him back into the wizarding world and puts him under his little love spell and stuff. But the thing is, those are not enough clues. This is not enough build up for her to actually join Grindelwald. It's just, it comes so out of nowhere. And the, the biggest issue I have with this is JK Rowling herself. We have Prisoner of Azkaban. And to me, Prisoner of Azkaban is one of the best books when it comes to an unexpected ending with a character that reveals to be someone completely different than we thought and not being evil at all. Like the serious Black Peter Pettigrew situation is perfect. It's so well built up. It's so obvious once you know. But when you read it the first time, you don't expect a thing. You think, yeah, Sirius is, is the bad guy. He's evil. Stuff is said. That's how it goes. That's, that's the antagonist. But he isn't. And Peter Pettigrew was teased throughout the entire book. We didn't even see it coming. When we look at it after finishing the book, it's so crystal clear. It's like, yes, of course. Oh, how could I be so stupid and not notice? The point I'm trying to make is J.K. Rowling is so capable of writing amazing character arcs that lead to them doing something you would never expect. She's amazing in building up wrong expectations just to completely throw everything over and tell you at the end, oh, wait, it's not like you expected. It's completely different. She does that in every book. But I think Prison of Azkaban is the one it's the most present and the most known. To me, Goblet of Fire is one of my favorite Harry Potter books. Yeah, I said it. And also the storyline with Barty Crouch Jr. being moody the entire time. Equally well written. Equally unexpected and yet so clear. So she, she does that. She can do it. She is clearly so capable of it. So why can't she do it with Queenie? I just... I just can't... I, I don't understand this. I... It, it, I can't grasp this. <laughs> Why can she do so well on all her Harry Potter books and then do so poorly with Queenie? We had the opportunity here. It would have been so great if she had built it up properly. But she didn't. 
And that is so sad. It, it really, it honestly, it just makes me sad. Because I'm such a great fan of the idea of Queenie going berserks and join Grind Grind Grindelwald, yes. And join Grindelwald, because we didn't see that coming. But it fits so perfectly. <sighs> yeah. And this is already what brings me to what I thought is not so well done and was poorly executed. Starting, as said, with the Queenie situation. We can apply that on the entire plot of this film. Because to me, this film was not good on, on a plot basis. Warner Brothers are happy to have such great actors and such great creative executives on the job so the film looks so good and feels so nice that it's almost, well, not important that the plot is bad. But it is important because we dissect everything. Yeah, we are fans and we want the plot. So what the thing is that makes me mostly very angry about this is this movie does not work at all like when i watch a film or i read a book then i want to have a, a conclusive story within this film or this book this does not totally apply to tv shows but that is not the matter right now but the thing is when i watch a film i want to have a premise at the start that carries throughout the film and at the end is somewhat closed and I can watch this film as a total without needing the rest. But Harry Potter does this. You can read every Harry Potter book separately without needing context. I mean, sure, you need the basics, you need to know how the wizarding world works, who Harry Potter is. You have a certain amount of knowledge that you need, of course. But still, with this knowledge, with this information we already have about how the wizarding world works, you can read The Goblet of Fire. It is its own conclusive story, even though throughout the books, the story evolves. You know, you have this premise that goes through all the books, which is the ultimate fight against Lord Voldemort, and builds up and grows throughout the books until we finish with the Deathly Hallows, which is arguably the least conclusive book in its own, but more the conclusion of the entire series. And to me, this is how it should work. You should not be frustrated after reading a book or watching a film out of a series because it doesn't have any conclusion. You know, I'm a fan of cliffhangers. That's not the point. I'm a fan of continuing a storyline throughout all films that go together. It's what Harry Potter does. It's what the Infinity Saga does. To a ridiculous ridiculously detailed amount like ah oh. but infinity war and uh, the infinity saga is a different topic for a different time but what i'm trying to say here is that fantastic beasts crime of grindelwald is not conclusive in itself at all this film does not it, it just does not have its own premise it's not going anywhere so when you compare Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them to The Crimes of Grindelwald, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is clearly its own story. It's like its own book. I know there's not a book for it, but it feels like it is its own book, its own story. Everything's fine. It has a conclusion at the end. It has a clear premise at the beginning. And throughout this conclusive and very separate storyline, the conflict with Grindelwald rising is evolving, is growing, and it completely works. It's nice, it's great, 
and I do not feel frustrated after watching this film because we capture Grindelwald at the end and Credence sort of reveals that he's an Obscurus with being thought to be dead but not being dead. You know what I mean. Like, there is a clear end to that part of the story. Whilst Crimes of Grindelwald, to me, feels more like a chapter out of a book. It's not its own story, it's just like a chapter out of it. Like someone ripped like one chapter out of a book and said, okay, this chapter has to be an entire movie, otherwise we would not get to five, but just four movies. And I do not think that would be a bad thing. We do not, I know it has a lot of money reasons, but we do not have to stretch a story longer than it is. Favourite example completely away from any Harry Potter related stuff. My favourite example for having not to fulfil the usually expected amount of books or films is Six of Crows. Six of Crows by Lieber Dugo is a duology. It's two books and that's fine, that's enough. She said it's a duology, done. That's the story I want to tell. And that's fine, because we get all the stuff we want and all what we need. And it's amazing and we don't need more because it's so compressed and so perfectly and so suspenseful and fun to read because it's happening. <laughs> and to me, Crimes of Grindelwald, there is nothing happening a film you can clearly leave out of the Fantastic Beasts series. I know we can't tell yet because what is going to happen in Fantastic Beasts 3? Nobody knows. Crimes of Grindelwald just feel so unnecessary. That, that I think that is the word. Unnecessary. You can't tell me that the Lestrange plotline couldn't have been left out of it. The entire story of Lita Lestrange is there to be like the, the, the pathway to the Lestrange tomb. That's all this is about. We don't need this story to tell us that Credence could have been Corbus but actually is Aurelius Dumbledore. We didn't need that. We really didn't need that. That is an information you could have dropped in like five minutes. Let's be honest. That, that that's it. Not it's not an important information. I mean, I guess that sort of the premise of the films is supposed to be credence wanting to know who he is, and that it's falsely lead to Corvus Lestrange, and then the reveal that Lita exchanged Corvus with. Someone who apparently is supposed to be Aurelius Dumbledore, which is also very questionable. Because how though? So if you if you are interested on theories how Aurelius Dumbledore could be existing, uh, watch the Super Carlin Brothers video on this because they have a very great set of theories and a very conclusive theory that might actually possibly be so if you're interested in that watch that and maybe it makes a little more sense after that there is no way we couldn't have revealed that in like five minutes it's just like yeah Lita exchanged Corbus and Aurelius Corbus died Aurelius survived end of story to me that is very sad because I like Lita I think Lita Lestrange had a great story arc that could have made her an amazing character and I liked Zoe Kravitz's portrayal of her and I don't know this might be an unpopular opinion but I really would have liked Lita to be one of the wizards and witches who stood against Grindelwald at the end. Everyone thinks of the Lestrange family as somewhat evil. Biggest example, Bellatrix Lestrange. Everyone who knows Bellatrix Lestrange is like, oh yeah, evil. 
And to me, Lita Lestrange is not evil. I mean, yes, she is a Slytherin, but being a Slytherin does not mean you are evil, first of all. And she acts mean and being like closed off of everyone else. And she has some sort of a mean character development throughout the story because she's getting bullied and her father did never love her and you know there's a lot that might push her towards the dark edge but to me it would be so amazing if Lita would not be evil if she was one of the good ones who stood against Grindelwald and supported the wizard's army to defeat Grindelwald and standing next to Dumbledore in the final moments. You know. Because I would love that. Because we finally would get a nice Slytherin. I just want that so, 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 so desperately. I want a nice Slytherin. Okay? That would be so great because her story is capable of that. She is capable of that. Killing her off in the first film she as a character appeared was the worst thing you could have done her. JK Rowling did her so dirty with this. Really. Because I know she was mentioned in the first part, but we, we get to know her in the second part. And she's lovely. She's She might seem like mysterious and a little bit, you know, you don't know what's going on with her. Is she maybe evil or is she not? And that is great for her because I wanted the big reveal, she's good. She's good. Without her dying, without scarring Newt as well as Theseus. Like, I know probably that will get important that the two are... Well, yeah, not the point here. With Lita appearing as a character in Crimes of Grindelwald and then dying in the crimes of Grindelwald makes her completely unnecessary and I hate it so much I really really hate it because I wanted her to be important like not just she's not important at all anymore she is the one that delivers us the information Corvus is dead we thought Credence was Corvus He's not Corvus. He apparently is Aurelius Dumbledore for whatever reason whatsoever. But that's all she does. She's like like this this herald. I don't know if that's the correct word. That's the word I learned. But she is the person that opens the door to the continuation of the story. She says, this is not Corvus. Corvus died. I killed him accidentally on that ship. And that starts the storyline, then who is Credence? And then Grindelwald marches in and says, you are Aurelius Dumbledore. And we don't know if he's lying to him or if he's really a Dumbledore because of the phoenix. And I'm just confused and ah, we wouldn't have needed Lita. And that is a shameful waste of character. Because I liked her, okay? I liked her and I wanted her to be a nice Slytherin. And killing her off in the first film is just not how it works. And I hate it so much. Lita is somewhat also a, a point of conflict. Because the only reason why we have conflict between Tina and Newt is Lita. Tina is like... Oh, oh, you, you're engaged now. Nice, thanks for telling me, bitch. And Newt tries to tell her, but he just really, he can't. And then the Salamander thing happens, which is so cute, honestly. Because these two are so stupid together and I love it. Because this is so awkward, but like cutesy awkward. And honestly, that is one of the best scenes in, in this film. Just because it's acted so well and this scene is actually written well. Like how Newt 
fights against himself trying to get out the word salamander but not get out the word salamander and then Tina obviously having read his book answering with salamander and finishing his his sentence and that is so cute and I just love this scene and for stuff like that there's enough build up but for the rest it's not we have a poor and very rare amount of Grindelwald it's like he doesn't do anything is it just me because to me Grindelwald is escaping from prison or well escaping from the prison carriage that's supposed to bring him to England and then he's gone and then he talks to some people and has some visions and then the tomb thing happens but there's so many loose strings at the end of this film and this film is just a bunch of loose strings actually that's that's what i would call it like we start a lot of stories that never get concluded in this film because they are based in the first film and they will be concluded in the third film or maybe even as the fourth fifth that making the second film completely unnecessary and Honestly, when the third film comes out, I bet you can just skip the second one. And that is a shame, because it had a lot of potential. Lita had a lot of potential. Queenie's story, you, you could have put so much more weight on why Queenie changes her mind from being nice and lovely. She's still nice and lovely. But what makes such a good-willed person go to Grindelwald and why does Grindelwald so particularly tries to get Queenie because she is obviously one of his closest like followers in the end because she is the one who is like talking to Credence to see if he's ready to talk to Grindelwald she's on his side there's something must have Grindelwald choose her you know she is not just a random follower but she's someone who Grindelwald like actively wanted to have on his side he sends someone to get her he takes her in personally he 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 offers her his hand to come to him and like pulls her in so there should have been like storyline how Grindelwald is so interested in Queenie, does he want her for her, like her mind reading skills? Does he want her because she is the sister of Tina and he knows Tina could probably be dangerous. So he has like a kind of insurance to not get killed by poking Tina Goldstein. What is it? Why? What? We need these informations. And to me... Yes, it's okay to reveal them later on, but if I do not reveal anything in this one film, why do I need this film? That's just... Okay. So, without having dipped too deep into anything that happened, which is... Me huh, I tried to be as objective as I could, even though it got personal really fast. But this is like my, opi my opinion about why it's not a good film objectively it's a fun film to watch it's not a good film that's that's my conclusion to wrap it up i like the film i'll watch it again it's fun to watch it's it has cute scenes it has a lot of fun little hints to stuff that will happen and that had happened and all of that but it's poorly written. I think a lot of characters are not given the attention they deserved. Yeah, I, I'm just not going to even go on the consistency errors. Like Professor McGonagall. That's just one. You know, it's, it's a film you can enjoy. It's a film that is lovely. And it's very high quality. It's so well made and the people who worked on the visuals and the acting and the directing and the score and stuff all of that is very very great the point where it is actually 
not good is the writing when it's something I really think is sad because we know JK Rowling has the abilities to write extremely popular, well written and super suspenseful and entertaining stories and I don't know if it was a time issue that they had to very abruptly like have the script or if it's just because she is not a screenwriter but on the other hand when we do have an author who is not a screenwriter why don't we have her meet a screenwriter who is experienced on the field who has studied screenwriting and collaborate this thing because so many films or more specific so many screenplays are written by two or more people it's common in film it's it's so common so why don't we just put jk rowling together with a screenwriter and maybe a lot of things would have been better that way the basics are there you know the story and the ideas and everything it's there it's just so poorly executed and that is what it makes it hard to watch especially as a fan I think when you're not a fan you have no clue what's going on at all so it's I think Fantastic Beasts is for fans it's for people who already know stuff about the wizarding world because otherwise you're so lost like after the first three minutes but it's just let's hope for Fantastic Beasts 3 which was delayed and just hope that we can soon have a better new Wizarding World film that makes us all a little less angry, confused and just somewhat disappointed. So maybe it will be better and I'm still excited for the next film. Not as much as I should be probably, but yeah, that's it. Thanks for listening. And when you have any suggestions for any topics for me to rant about, which could be a lot of things, just let me know in the comments and you will hear me next time. Bye!